how you guys it's been a crazy busy week and weekend I'm really excited to share with you how the weekend went uh, my horses did awesome at the rodeo so I'm gonna keep my lips shut and show you how it went I just drove seven hours to Airdrie to pick up my brand new, well, new to me, horse trailer. I'm pretty excited. Um, it has a full living quarters, so I can have a little more space. So awesome. Um, but yeah, so I just drove up here. The people I bought the trailer from actually came down and met me because they're from Northern Alberta. And um, yeah, so I drove seven hours to meet them in Airdrie, pick up the trailer, and now I'm turning around to head right back home. So 14 hours driving today, but gotta do what you gotta do. drove 14 hours and mom had a dinner made for me at home. <sighs> so nice. So I just went um, to, I call him my voodoo doctor. Um, he's an acupuncturist by trade, but he's one of those people that can just look you right in the soul and tell you straight up what's really going on um, and can just read people really well. And I was there today and I was telling him, you know, I'm not sleeping. I haven't been sleeping well really since I lost Chad, but I particularly since I've been home, I keep waking up at the same time in the middle of the night. And what he said to me about the time that I'm waking up is that it has to do with um, guilt and grief. And he said to me, and I won't use his words exactly because he likes to swear, um, but he said, you know, Maddie, like you haven't even been a year past probably the most traumatic th thing you've ever experienced. And these things mess you up for a long time. And he's like, you have a few years of being messed up before you kind of learn how to handle it and be able to just carry it as part of your life. So he's like, don't fault yourself for that. And he's like, that's what's causing you to wake up in the same time in the middle of the night. And... Um, oh my god, we had this, um, I get rattled even talking about it. We have, um, recently had a really tragic accident in Canada, in Saskatchewan. Um, there was an accident involving a semi-truck and, um, a hockey team, and it was a junior hockey team, and 15 of the people on the bus died. And, um, they, a lot of them were young, like 16 to 18 year old hockey players. And it's just this huge traumatic incident. And for some reason, it's really got to me. And I, it's obviously been a really um, big and shocking thing for everyone up here. Um, and I think partially it has to do with the fact that Chad was a hockey player and that I also lost him in a vehicle accident. And I think that I just, this has made me a lot more empathetic. And I feel on some level a little bit of what those people are experiencing um, obviously like my tragic experience was different and I lost one person and that was life-altering and almost killed me really and so I can't even imagine what they're going through but I think the thing to remember with all of these hard things is that feeling it is okay and I think being away was good for me because I didn't have to be you know being at home, it's almost like I'm constantly reminded that Chad isn't here. When I'm away, I can kind of be a little bit more removed from it. And I obviously, I still miss him. But here, it's like you go to the same places that you would go together. And, you know, I'm doing the things that him and I would have done together, living in our space and stuff like that. And so it's like a constant reminder that he's not here. Whereas being away, it's almost like I, I know it, but I don't have to have it rubbed in my face all the time. But just for any of you that are going through something traumatic life-altering like it's just okay to feel it it's okay to be upset and you don't need to explain that to anyone and just surround yourself with the good people because I know that's the only way that I've survived this and you know keep those people from this bus accident in your prayers because I just I can't even imagine um yeah <laughs> I have a hard time even talking about it. But yeah, that's my thoughts for the day. Is just remember, you guys, when you're going through something awful, it's okay to feel, it's okay to grieve, and take as much time as you need. And don't let anyone tell you anything different. Don't let anyone 
expectations get to you and I think I did for a long time but you know being upset about something that changed your life someone that you lost or anything like that it takes a while to learn to kind of live with it so if you guys are going through a hard time I'm going to be praying for you and you know keep me in your prayers and please keep those people um, that have lost those 15 hockey players in your prayers too because I just can't even imagine what they're going through. around the yard and most horses are afraid of fire like they, you know I don't know if it's an instinctual thing it kind of freaks them out not these guys just keeping an eye on it dealing with some serious mud up here right now and mud is kind of kind of inevitable in Canada in the springtime but this is like really bad mud so we had a bunch of fill brought in and I think it just because it's like new dirt and it's like a year too old now but I came in here with the tractor trying to move some of the mud around to get it to dry up and my tractor sunk down and I stepped off the tractor and sunk down like an entire foot into this mud so I asked dad, I'm like, is there anything we can do about this? <laughs> and so he tells me, he's like, just, I'll, I'll deal with it. So today he texts me this morning and he goes, are you gonna be around? I have a truck coming up. And this is what the truck was like. Girls, first trip in the new trailer. I already got rain down this morning. Mm -hmm. It is a pouring rainy day today, but we are headed off to Barrier for an open rodeo today. And with the way that this rodeo is structured, I can actually run two horses, which is kind of unusual for a rodeo. Um, so I've got Grinchy and Jada in the trailer. It's going to be Jada's very first rodeo, which is pretty exciting. Um, it's a nice little indoor, so it should be a pretty easy run for Miss Jada's first one. Um, yeah, off we go. It's like a three hour drive and of course I'm late, but yeah. So when I'm seasoning a horse, I like to get them in the arena ahead of time if I can. So you can see here it's a long muddy alleyway, so this way they can check out the alleyway, see if there's any stock in there, and then you can see I'm here looking at the pattern. So I'm checking out where the pegs are, where the barrels are going to be, to plan my entrance to come in for the pattern. I also like getting in there ahead of time to feel out the ground a little bit, and then if I am seizing a horse, they can check out things like the banners and different lights and the grandstands and that kind of thing. Get the clock for the 14th. 
14, 142, a 14, 142. You girls know you both made it to the short go tonight? Are you good girls? I'm just in the trailer warming up. It's kind of cold today. Um, so both the girls made it back for the short go. So the top 20 from the long go where we ran earlier today come back at night and that's where we run for the money. So um, they have a few other events as well tonight. Um, I think there's bareback riding, saddle bronc riding, bull riding, then us. Um, so lucky for me, um, I have a friend that's coming to help me. Um, her name is Shaylin. Thank you for helping me and saving me today because um, Grinchy came back ninth and Jada came back fourth. So I only actually, and they're running in the order that everyone's coming back. So I only actually have five riders in between the two horses. So um, yeah, it's awesome that she's here to help me because that's gonna be kind of a quick turnaround, hop on one right next to the, you know, ride one, hop right on the next one. So pretty excited, Jada's first rodeo and she's coming back in the fourth place spot. What a little rock star. Warm up crew! Hi! <laughs> what do you think, Dimchi? She's, She's not like, happy. I don't know who this lady is. All right, we are all done for the night. Um, both the girls did so good. Grinchy and I like just barely skimmed our second barrel. Um, she's not really a barrel knocker, so oh, too bad, but she was working really good. And little Miss Jada did awesome. She had a little trip leaving her third barrel and on the second, I didn't really switch my hand, I feel like, until the last second. And so I kind of moved her over a little bit weird, but she took it all awesome. And so she was a 14-1, which brought us into the sh um, short go in fourth place. And then we ran a 14-3. So we were a little bit too slow to make any money. They only paid four spots. Um, and then Grinchy with her tip barrel was a 14-4. Um, and she'd run a 14-5 earlier today. So they both did awesome. Like, such a good day. Four really good runs. And I'm tired, so I think I'm gonna stay here tonight, which I'm so glad I have my new house on wheels to sleep in. It's nice and warm in here. Ah, <sighs> so yeah, I'm just way too exhausted to drive. It's like after nine and I live three hours away. It's not that bad, but anyway, <laughs> I'm just too tired. So yeah, pretty proud of those girls today. Good night, good news. Well, thanks for watching, you guys. I'm going to have another Thursday video coming your way in a couple days here. Um, this coming weekend, I'm actually heading to Washington. I'm going to a derby in Walla Walla. So for those of you that don't know what a derby is, um, maturity age horses can be either four or five. Usually we run them at five in Canada. Um, and then derby horses are what they are for the next two years after their um, a maturity horse. So if they run at five, for example, then at six and seven, they would be um, of derby age. So Jada actually never ran in the Paturities, but she is um, eligible as a derby horse, so she's six. So I entered her in um, the derby next weekend in Walla Walla, Washington. So I'm gonna be heading down there and uh, pretty excited for it. It should be fun. Mm -hmm.